On today's episode of The Guitar with Rod, we're gonna be talking about all things guitar tab books. How awesome these guitar tab books are, why they're awesome, and why you need to take a little caution when using them. Coming up. Welcome to The Guitar with Rod, I'm Rod, where we talk all things guitar, music, and you. And as mentioned, we're gonna be talking about guitar tab books. Now, what exactly is a guitar tab or a guitar tablature or a guitar tablature transcription book? Well, we're gonna explain. Wikipedia defines tablature as a form of musical notation indicating instrument fingering rather than musical pitches. So in other words, the low down is that guitarists can read numbers in place of a standard like music notation. And it may seem like it's guitarist's dirty little secret that we're actually learning whole musical pieces with numbers rather than uh, music notes. And it would be a dirty little secret, but it's not. I'm a major proponent of learning how to read and uh, learning music theory. The reality of it is tablature has been around for string fretted instruments since the 15th century. A tablature for string fretted instruments were common throughout the Renaissance and Baroque eras. And tab systems didn't always use numbers. For instance, the French during the Renaissance for their lute music used a series of lowercase letters they call glyphs. Skip ahead today and tabs are really more popular than ever. I wanna, I wanna offer a little insight when it comes to tablature. I wanna offer some insight when it comes to the classical guitar world versus kind of this blues, rock, metal, kind of American westernized guitar world. And why the classical world kind of moved away from this tab system and kind of moved towards a standard notation and why kind of modern American guitars uh, music kind of embraced it. So one of the things when you see uh, guitars like Fernando Sor, uh, Eduardo, uh, later on uh, classical guitarists the, considered the father of the modern day classical guitar, Francisco Torrega, uh, later on Segovia, you can argue that they were all trying to raise the stature of the guitar. So it makes sense after the Baroque period uh, that guitarists would start to lean going towards standard notation. After all, they're trying to raise the stature of it. And a lot of other non-fretted instruments are already using some form of standard notation. So it kind of makes sense why the classical guitar world kind of leaned away from doing any types of tabs, even though nowadays you could find a lot of tablature for classical music, and we're kind of gonna go over the kind of pros and cons of those books. Look at metal, when you look at blues, when you look at rock, I think it's completely different. I think it's something where uh, these genres really have embraced this tab system. Because when you look at a lot of bands even nowadays, a lot of bands don't write their music down. Uh, so in addition to having a recording, really having a tablature book of your music is really quite impressive because you're really cataloging it in a whole different manner. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring up uh, tab books real quick about like in particular books that Hal Leonard is actually has done a fairly phenomenal job at covering some extreme metal bands. So Megadeth, even though Megadeth is one of the most, they're one of the biggest thrash bands of like all time, to have their, you know, most iconic thrash album, you know, literally catalog in a book like this. Now, everything in here, and we're going to talk about typos and that type of thing, everything in here is not perfect, but that's pretty awesome. Now, when we start getting into some even heavier styles of metal, it's pretty amazing to me when you see a book like this. I mean, this is a Lamb of God tab book. And this is almost as heavy as it gets when you got a major publisher like Hal Leonard that is publishing a book like this. I mean, again, this is helping to preserve some of these genres. And when you look at a book like Robert Johnson, and this has been recently revised, I mean, you're really helping to catalog one of the fathers of blues, rhythm, uh, rock. I mean, there's so much in this book. There's so much history in this book, which they superimpose the uh, cigarette out of his mouth. Now, when you start getting into some of the darker ales of metal, when you start looking at death metal, when you start looking at black metal, uh, when you start looking at bands like Carcass and Morbid Angel and extreme metal bands like Cradle of Filth, you would think that some of these bands, as musical as they are, would have tab books that maybe Hal Leonard would say, hey, let's go ahead and publish some of these uh, bands. But when you get to bands like that, 
you really have to start searching the ales of the internet. You know, you get websites like Ultimate Guitar Pro, you get um, websites like Metal Tabs, um, but some of these are just done by like guys like me, and some of them are really good, but you really do have to watch the quality of the tabs you're getting. So tabs are great, and if you're like, oh, now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go learn me some Bach, I'm gonna go learn me some Megadeth, whoa, before you do that, I just wanna offer you a couple of words of caution. And the first word of caution is, tab books, like any other books, can contain typos. I've seen a couple of weird typos, especially when it comes to the classical guitar side of things. So the number uh, one I think thing I see is simply where the number doesn't correspond to the note. And this is where one of the most important things when it comes to reading is if you just absolutely don't know how to read any of the notes and something sounds a little off, sometimes it could just be a typo. It could just be that the note the note is not corresponding to the number or the number is not corresponding to the note, vice versa. So if you absolutely just don't know how to read any standard notation, what I would recommend for that is to print out some sort of little guitar uh, tab that just simply has all the notes. You can see all the numbers and it has all the notes. You can pinpoint that and you can kind of identify if it's the right note or not. The other uh, little kind of typo that I see is where the accidental is not there. And what I mean by an accidental is that it's uh, a sharp or a flat or a natural sign that's not there. So the note will say, for instance, it should be like an F sharp and they show the correct, um, well, I don't really know. So that's the thing. So when you start reading and you see that it's not anywhere where it's in like the key signature or where you had a previous sharp before where it's okay to not have that accidental there, no, where the accidental should be there and you're not seeing it. Oftentimes when I see that type of typo, the number is correct. But when you know how to read, you do question yourself because you ask yourself, okay, is the note right or is the, the tab a number right? So that's something you do want to be cautious of. The number two thing I think you want to be cautious of when it comes to tab books is things that are written in different positions. So you can have a whole solo that Hal Leonard has cataloged and maybe the notes are actually correct. Now, I'm going to grab a guitar and I'm going to show you what I mean. I mean by different positions is the tricky thing about guitar composing for the guitar tabbing for the guitar is that we can play the exact same note in different positions or different areas of the guitar so let me kind of illustrate what i mean here so i'm on the second fret uh third string and i'm gonna hit an a note that same exact that same exact note on the staff and everything is right here all the way up on the seventh fret on the fourth string. That same exact note is up here on the 12th uh, fret on the fifth string. So you can see that if someone were to write um, a section here, one may be tabbing it here because maybe that's the way the artist played it another person can come in and tab something because maybe they feel they're getting better tone here. So you can be looking at a tab, and I find this more common with metal and rock books that you might have a little run, and then you go to look at a video and you're thinking, hey, like the guitarist is in a different area of the guitar, but when I play it, it still sounds right. Well, it may be right. It's because you're in a different position. So I just think that's something you need to uh, look out for. So it's not necessarily an error, but it is something you need to consider. So when something doesn't sound right when you're playing a tab, you need to ask yourself a couple of different questions. Number one is, is the note correct? Number two, and this is again, going to be more for maybe blues, more for metal, and even classical when you start getting up to more difficult pieces, but are you understanding the rhythm? So even if you don't read staff, you're still going to have to, um, have some understanding of quarter notes and half notes and dotted quarter notes and 16th notes and how all of these things sound in conjunction together and how to play them. That leads us into number three. Do you understand the feel of it? So this really comes into play when it comes to, um, you know, doing rock or metal songs. Sometimes you could see it written and it looks nice and you're kind of playing it nice, but you just need that extra little. Sometimes stuff like that. Sometimes you need to just play it to get the feel of it. So don't forget the feel. This leads us into number four. Use your ear. 
something doesn't sound right, you know, you're checking the notes, you're checking the position, uh, you know, you're checking the feel, you got the feel of it, but something still just doesn't sound right, you know, still remember you got an ear, so remember to use your ear. My fifth tip is to cross-reference. So if something's not sounding right, and this especially goes off in the classical guitar world, so if you are going to pick yourself up a uh, Bach guitar tab book, you really need to pick yourself up some Bach, what I call source material, something that's just notes, no tab in here whatsoever. That way you can have a solid cross-reference uh, point and get yourself a couple of different things. On the metal side of things, this something like this is gonna be as close as you can really get to source material. Um, I remember, um, unless you can get the information from the artist directly. So I remember um, I was trying to, I was playing Tornado of Souls. So I was looking at Tornado of Souls and there was this little riff in there that I remember looking at YouTube and I saw a tutorial and he didn't seem to quite have it right. And then I saw someone else and they had it completely wrong. And then the music, something in there was right, but it kind of wasn't. And then I saw Dave Mustaine, and this is not recently, this was a while ago, he was giving some sort of lesson and it came down to like, everything was right, but he just kind of showed you the, I kind of heard how it feels. I heard the feel, if that makes sense. And then I was able to like, it all snapped, like, okay, this is how you actually do that rip. Well, that is all we have for today's video. We hope you got something out of this. And if you did, you know, Subscribe to the channel, give us a like, give us a thumb up, share the video. We would certainly appreciate it. We're gonna be back with more information. I'm gonna be doing more segments on sheet music. We're gonna be doing a cool little thing on piano, guitar, vocal books that you think that suck. They're actually awesome. We enjoy talking about music. We enjoy talking about the guitar, metal, classical, jazz, country blues. We're gonna to continue to educate you. We're gonna to continue to take you down an awesome journey in the guitar. I hope you to continue to slay, continue to shred, and I hope to see you again. Talk to you guys soon.